Hey everyone, I got another video with my 1996 uh, Fiber Trans Am WS6. Um, about, gosh, it's probably been 15 plus years ago, I did a uh, gauge overlay. So I wanted to, you know, I wanted to go with like the silver gauges and I did matching uh, HVAC controls and then where the lights um, in the dimmer are. <clears throat> Um, the issue that I've kind of had the last couple years is the this overlay uses some kind of um, gosh I don't know what it's called it's almost like an indiglo type light. All right, so let me show you guys what the current overlay looks like. So put the car in accessory mode. Um, you can see it illuminates a little bit, uh, just not really bright, and it'll it'll dim as I'm driving. I kind of have to keep flicking this, you know, turning this knob down here. Um, it used to get a lot brighter than this. This seems to be kind of like the max. Occasionally it'll, if I keep fiddling with it, it'll get real bright, but it's just, it's just hard to see. Like during the day and there you go, kind of popped up a little bit, but at night it's not terrible. Um, but like I said, it'll, it'll, it'll keep doing this kind of thing and you keep messing with it. Um, and then during the day, cause it kind of, it, well, as soon as the car comes on, it comes on and it kind of dims it. So it's, just kind of annoying even during the day. So what we're gonna do is we are going to get rid of that. And I custom ordered a new overlay from Black Cat Customs. I'll put the URL um, in the description below. Uh, it took a couple months to get it in the mail. Um, and then, I, you know, I had them, like I said, it's custom, so you can add some additional things like a Firebird in there, which I thought would be kind of cool. But to go along with the, you know, the silver theme I've already got going, in the car, um, I thought this would look nice. And, and as you can see, this is not using any kind of Indiglo. There's no no wiring connections or anything like that. So this will actually use the factory illumination in the gauge cluster. And being that this car is 25 years old, um, most likely some of those bulbs potentially could be out. Um, but even if they're not, it's just, you know, the incandescent bulbs just don't give you great light. So what we've got here, if you can see is LED bulbs. So that was an extra on the kit, but LED bulbs that are gonna replace the incandescent bulbs in the cluster. So what we will do is get everything pulled out of here, trim, cluster, and um, we'll get everything out and we'll do the bulbs first, replace those bulbs. And then um, I actually have a, a 97 plus basil on here. So we'll pull that off, pull the old, they obviously gotta get the needles off. Um, something to keep in mind, um, I'll talk about it when, I'm, when I get to that point in the video, but is you, I, I think they recommend that you start the car in idle and, and take a really good picture or make note of where the needles are at when it's in the idle position. Um, that way when you put them back on, obviously start the car idling, put the needles back on, your, your readings I guess won't be off. Um, so that's what they recommend, and, and it even mentioned that in the instructions that came with the new uh, overlay. So I'll get the camera propped up here, and we'll go ahead and get started. First starting. thing, we are going to uh, lower your steering wheel, and we're just going to pop this off. There's there's four clips. Um, it's this whole piece here, and it really just kind of pops out this way. It's been a while, but that's what I remember. Okay, so there's actually a connector. You don't actually want to pull the fog light switch out. Um, there's there's a connector that you kind of pry, you, you pull up the little clip and then you're able to pull it out. I'll show you here in a second once I get this out. Okay, so I actually took, um, just ripped a paper plate in half and I had it here uh, just to protect the glass from this one pin on the right side. But you were, I'm kind of, I was able to kind of pull it up and then shift the basil this way, and then um, and kind of slowly get it out and carefully not scratch the glass. And then here's the connector I was talking about here. If you guys can see that, 
So there was just over on the other side, um, there's a connector. I don't know if you guys can see or not, but this just pops in there. So it was, it was just the piece that I pulled up. There's a hook here, able to pull it out. So first step done, we got this out. We will set this aside. So now what we want to do is get the whole cluster out and then we can work on it on the workbench. Um, so it looks like you've got um, a bolt here, here, and then let's see. there's another one down in here that I can see. Sure there's one over here too. Yeah. So we got these four bolts. Let's see what size those are. Alright, so I'm using um, a 932 here, just a regular screwdriver to get those four bolts out. So yeah, these things are definitely your friend. Retractable magnet. When you're working in tight spaces and taking out small screws, keep one of these things handy. Once you get those four bolts out, the the cluster, like the, the plastic cover and the basils, this piece actually comes out. And that was over top the gauge cluster. Uh, but it it does in fact hold the cluster. Uh, that's what actually tightens the cluster to the car. Now there's also these hex uh, bolts in here. And I think those are what actually um, keep the the front panel oops, those are what actually keep the front panel um, down on top of the gauge cluster itself so at this point we should be able to pull the cluster out disconnected from the, the connection harness in the back and it's just it should just be a, a straight motion we just pull it this way you might have to like wiggle it a little bit left and right but we will go ahead and do that now Okay, before we forget, this is the point where you actually want to start the car up and get it in the idle position and then take a really clear picture of where your needles are at. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. Okay guys, so I actually loosened up, but all I did was I got a hand here and a hand here and I pulled it. I just kind of worked on it a little bit left and right, but pulled it, pretty much pop it straight out. and. Um, when you do that, you'll see that there's the connector piece back there, and that's where it was plugged into. Now I'm gonna have to set mine here for a second because I need to get these hex screws off to get the overlay off because my overlay has a wire that's connected down to that controller at the bottom. So I can't actually pull this all the way out of the car because of that wire. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this, this overlay off, and then we'll get this on the workbench and um, replace the light bulbs and get the new overlay on. And just so you guys know, it is a, a T15. Put that on the right spot here. It is a T15 hex that we're gonna use. Okay, something we do need to talk about is the the needles. Um, let me zoom in here a little bit. To get the needles off, you can use two knives. I've seen people do. Um, trying to get a better view here. But I actually have these plastic trim kit remover pieces. Something, and these will probably work but you need just like a flat, semi-flat surface, two of them. And let's see, we'll use, should work. But you wanna get on like two sides, two sides of the needle and kind of like, kind of push it so it comes straight out as best you possibly can. 
me start with the fuel gauge here. See how this goes. I'm gonna get two pieces of the prong behind it, my thumb on top of it, and you can see it just pop straight out. But it it really is a very small metal needle in there. And um, let's see if you can see here. And there's just a tiny little hole, and that's the part that goes into the needle. So the other thing is uh, make sure you remember which which is um, which needle was for which. I mean, I think the bottom um, are probably all the same. All the four are probably the same. And then these do look about the same, but I, I don't know. I, I would keep them the same. So make sure you set them aside in the in the right order that you took, you know, so you know which one's which. able to get this overlay off hopefully and might be a little yeah, it looks like there was probably some double-sided tape on it so I'll work that off This is coming off as easy as it is. You would think that this would have really, being on here for 15 plus years, it would have really stuck to it. Certainly did leave some residue though. That's okay. We're doing another overlay anyway, so how do we go? So now we're free. The cluster out. Uh, let me zoom back out for you guys. Cluster's out. So the next step, obviously, is to take off the back panel here um, so that we can put the bulbs in. As you can kind of see here. But we need to get this off, and then we'll twist these, take them out, and then we'll put the new ones in, the LEDs. And so I'm going to get this set up um, probably in a workspace here so that we could better work on it. All right, so I got the cluster set up on a little workspace area here. Um, put a pillow underneath it just because you've got those those prongs and things sticking out, and you've got the, the reset over here um, for your trip, I guess. So we're gonna go ahead and use the T15 to get these hex bolts out. And then that should give us access to the back and we can take out the incandescent bulbs and put in the LEDs. And you can see here's the back of the cluster exposed. Um, <clears throat> we are going to be replacing uh, not all of these bulbs. They only sent, I think they only sent me six. Looks like there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the bag and, and take a look and see what we got. Okay, so the instructions that came with the LED kit is referencing five bulbs, but they actually sent me six. But it looks like there's a total of seven, um, which is interesting, but it, it looks like we definitely want to do the ones that they have marked here with the arrows. So I'm going to go ahead and take out the ones that they have marked and see how they look. It looks like these two here uh, I'm not sure what they these are illuminating ah I see why these are your turn signals so my guess is that if we were to put the LED bulbs in there they might freak out a little bit so I think these these two need to stay normal because they're your turn signal bulbs
So yeah, it looks like, just doing a little more digging here, it, it's an optional light. Um, if, if you want get, to get more illumination, I guess on the speedometer, um, they give this optional light that's got a, a, a pigtail of additional LEDs up here. Um, to, you know, I guess maybe it, it helps light this area a little bit better for the overlay. This is kind of cool, guys. Um, here's the overlay, you know, with no light behind it. And as soon as I put it up to my, my monitor, I mean, look at that, it looks really cool. So I think this is gonna look really sharp once it's on here. All right, guys, so something I actually was a little unclear of, this, the, the black overlay, the factory overlay, actually does need to come off. Um, otherwise, you're not going to get the proper illumination on the new one. So I think that makes more sense. So I'm going to carefully peel back um, the factory overlay and then put this one in place because it's just, it, it looks good with the LEDs, but it's just not, it's not enough to illuminate through this, you know, and onto the new one. So, so it looks like these little, these little needles just pop out. So just take those needles out before you try to pull off the factory overlay. Twist them. Just kind of wiggle them and work their way out. So it's just it's just stuck on here with like some sticky tape. So it it seems as though you can kind of just work work your way around it and, and pull it up to get it off. So We'll go ahead and do that, and then we will get the Black Hat Custom overlay on here, and then we'll check the lighting again, see how it looks. All right, guys, I was able to get the factory overlay off. Just just some sticky, you know, double-sided sticky tape, basically, is all it seemed to be. Um, so here is the inside from the uh, other view. Um, you can see where the, where the needles are. Odometer there, trip, trip meter. Uh, there's your turn signals. And then here's where the LED lights are, right there. Let's see one in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the Black Hat Custom overlay, and we'll okay. see. We'll take another shot at this Black Hat Custom overlay. Factory one is off. Let's see how the illumination looks. So based on the picture that you had, go ahead and put your needles back exactly where they were in your picture. And <clears throat> when you start the car, you might have to do some adjustments. So we'll see how it looks. Go ahead and replace all the um, hex bolts. So once you get your cluster back in here, make sure it's lined up, press it back in so it clips into the connector, and then give it a test. Turn on your parking lights. There you go. All right, so I'm at the point of getting the gauges or the needles back in to the proper position. <clears throat> if you took a picture with the engine running, uh, obviously before you took anything apart, that's what I would use for your comparison. Uh, what also helps is if you have um, access to like a scan gauge, something you can pull the stats from your OBD2 port. Um, so you can see, you know, like water temperature is 190, you know, make sure that kind of lines up with what you're showing on your needle there. Oil pressure, you know, battery volts, like 12.7. It's a little bit below 13, and then your fuel. Uh, I mean, they recommend, obviously, if you have a, a, a full tank of fuel, which I basically did. I was just a, a tad uh, under the full mark, but get that pretty close. Your tachometer, and then I'm actually going to just drive down the street a little bit just to make sure that the uh, speedometer looks correct. 
Uh, but that's about it. Um, once you get that all calibrated correctly, then we can move on to getting everything buttoned up. So it's actually daytime still in the garage here, but uh, we'll turn on the lights and see how it looks. Um, so getting pretty good, pretty good coverage. Might be kind of hard to tell with the phone. It's not perfectly even. Uh, I think it stands out more on the phone screen. But I think that's probably why they included an extra light. If you really want to take everything apart, you can put that extra light bulb um, and it'll get you more light up in this top corner here. Uh, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to do it. I, like I said, it doesn't show up as much when I'm just looking at it as it does on the phone. And I think once I put the basil and everything back in, um, it's probably going to be fine the way it is. But they definitely give you the option if you want to do that. So just went for a drive and made sure that all of the um, <clears throat> indicators on the gauge cluster are accurate. Um, the main thing I was trying to match up was the, um, the speedometer, and you can use you can use a GPS app or a miles per hour app. You can download on the App Store and just make sure it's it's accurate, and you should be. So everything is back in, got the basil back in, the trim piece back in. Yeah, as you can see, probably in the previous section there, you just gotta be real easy with it. Um, and just be really careful, use use something to protect the screen, or the, the clear plastic here, your fingers. You don't wanna scratch it as you're trying to get that one uh, pin over on that side. Uh, everything's looking pretty good though. And uh, I think it's definitely a worthwhile upgrade. Um, a little more involved than I initially thought it would be, but um, I think it's gonna look really cool at night. I'll uh, add some video after this of the, the night view. There you go, guys. This is what it looks like at night. Uh, looks pretty good. I was worried it might be a little too bright, but I like it. It's real clear, stands out really nice. I think it was worthwhile. It was a little more challenging than I anticipated, but I think, you know, now that I know all the ins and outs of it, I think next time would be a lot easier. So thanks for watching. Good luck on your project.